With the release of Halo Infinite's gameplay showcase, there have been multiple new features confirmed for the next entry in the series. I'll never be a fan of Sprint, but that's really only when it comes to the multiplayer side of Halo. It makes sense though to include it in the open world campaign, however. The other element from the demo that was introduced and showcased was the new grappling hook that will play a big part in Infinite. Now you can grapple onto structures, enemies, and even fusion coils to throw at enemies. Grappling hooks in first-person shooters seem to be a newer trend that many developers have been tinkering with. If done properly, the experience of this mechanic can be very engaging. I'm excited that Halo will be bringing this to the table, I just hope it's done in a way that's smooth and not jarring for the player. Having all these thoughts running through my head these past few months, I wanted to experiment with seeing how Halo would actually function with this grappling hook mechanic. Could it be seamless? Does it fit well into the Halo combat loop? What new ways can this allow players to make their experiences unique with each playthrough? Well, I can't answer all these questions with the limited free time I have, so instead let's just make a meme video and see how that goes. The first question on how this video will be achieved is the visuals. 343 has stated numerous times that Halo Infinite is a spiritual reboot for the series that harkens back to Combat Evolved for inspiration. I took this as the main core of my idea, so I decided to use CE's art style. And since we all know how much I love the Unity game engine, I'm going to use that as well. Now you may be wondering why I don't just spare myself all this hard work and use Halo Custom Edition to do this video. Well for starters, Halo CE has a really old physics engine that's very... uh... quirky? It won't be able to simulate what I want this recreation to feel like. I also know Unity much more than Halo CE modding. I could have someone else who's way better at modding Halo CE, like Altus, who, by the way, made a Minecraft mod for Halo CE's campaign which you guys should really check out. Link in the description. Having someone else do this would be pointless though, because I want to do this on my own. All in all, using Unity will be the best way to achieve the recreation. We begin with porting a level from Halo CE. I immediately wanted to use the second mission, Halo, as the map to use the grappling hook on. It seems the Infinite demo wanted to recreate this level as well, so that's a plus. Porting the map itself wasn't too difficult on its own. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I've been porting Halo CE maps for a while now, and I've gotten really good at streamlining the process. I have a materials folder that I can have newly imported assets linked to automatically and assign identical materials to, so that the mesh can update to reflect these changes. This cuts down on the time it takes to set up each material as Bungie used multiple materials across all maps in the game. The only materials I didn't set up for this was the water, as I do not yet have a ported water shader from CE. One day, perhaps. With the materials all finished up, it was time to focus on lighting the level. Originally, I went with a warmer color tone to match the sunset the original level seemed to have, but I felt this didn't replicate the cool, mysterious feeling the environment had when Master Chief lands on it for the first time. After some iteration, I finally came across a setup I really felt was close enough to the original level. I also fixed my Master Chief port to better match the original Xbox's parameters. If you notice with this image, he seems very washed out. That's because the way I ported the CE assets, I disabled sRGB on the multi-purpose textures. However, re-enabling sRGB brought the colors to a more acceptable look. One final change I made was making the detail texture render after the cube map. A while ago it was discovered that this flag was broken in the gearbox port of Halo CE, so Master Chief seems a little too shiny. With the fix, his detail texture renders over the cube map. Now we have something that looks almost one to one with the original Xbox version. I applied these latest changes to other models that use multi-purpose textures, like the first person arms in the weapon models. Now I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I think this looks extremely close to the original graphics, albeit slightly different because of the modern lighting Unity uses. Now that the map was 100% ready, it was time to move to the first person part of the recreation. We have handled the materials already, but a big component in getting this right is the first person animations. For the longest time, I never understood how Halo managed the walking animations for weapons. Every time I would export the animations from Max, they would appear to be broken and thus left me perplexed. However, with the help of my longtime friend Marco, we figured out how to set up the moving animations in Unity properly. The reason they appear broken is because it's actually an overlay animation that applies over the idle animation of the weapon. This carries on to later Halo games as well. Now with that taken care of, we now have what is starting to feel like Halo CE. I, shockingly, wrote some code for the animations to play on certain keys as well. I wanted to trick viewers that this was CE at first, so I needed to make sure I was fiddling with the weapons like a normal player would do. I didn't code in anything else besides ammo count for the weapons, just in case I needed to set up reloading in some capacity. 
The next bit was the HUD, and this is probably my least favorite aspect of the video. I really tried to port the HUD manually from CE, but I couldn't get the elements to look correct. Here's what I had before scrapping it all together. Nothing impressive. In the end, I just used a masked out version of the HUD that a CE modder named Holy Crust took for me. It worked out well, but I don't think the radar translated well enough. At this point, most of all the visuals are now complete for the recreation, but there still is something important missing. The actual grappling hook. While I'm able to program certain things like animations and sounds, I can't actually code anything like a grappling hook. I decided to use my trusty friend YouTube and search for anyone who's already made a physics-based grappling hook in Unity. If any of you are familiar with the game dev scene on YouTube, you've probably heard of someone called Danny. Danny is working on a game called Carlson, and in it he developed a grappling hook which he later made a tutorial series on how to replicate it for yourself. After downloading the code from his GitHub, I was able to set up the scripts pretty quickly. One change I made that I felt would be important was making the grapple pull you to the grapple point. In the infinite demo, we see the player gets pulled upwards on a higher ledge. I wanted to make sure mine functioned the same way. This was actually really easy to change, for all I had to do was just adjust the joint spring to be a much higher number to replicate the effect. Lastly, I modeled, and well, when I mean modeled, I mean I just stretched a cube around and made something that vaguely resembled a grappling hook. This followed the CE forearm to really sell the mechanic, and the texture was just a forerunner one I had from Halo CE. And there we go! We now have a functioning grappling hook complete with Halo CE visuals. Though, I couldn't help but feel something was missing. There needed to be something else for this video. Well, after I showed Kitty Rules my progress, he came up with the idea to have the forerunner pillars seen all across the landscape in the infinite demo, added to the original Halo level. It was a fantastic idea, and it really gave the video the second twist I was looking for. The pillars themselves proved to be a challenge though. While the execution was fine, the pillars material was way too smooth that it almost made it hard to see that they were actually pillars. I tried adding detail textures and changing some lighting, but I just couldn't make it look the way I had envisioned it to be. Luckily, it seemed everyone understood what they were. With everything finalized, it was time to record the footage. Normally this wouldn't be a challenge, but I am particularly OCD about how I want things achieved. I had a set of actions that had to happen in the footage, or else, in my mind, it wouldn't be believable. I would have to make sure not to press the moving keys while in midair, as I didn't program the animations to stop while airborne, which the original Halo did. I also had to make sure not to reveal the pillars too early, or the viewer would be too focused on those instead of when you grapple. But nothing compared to me messing up the swing to the top of the spire. I don't know if I'm just bad at video games and I really need to get good, but I could not reach the top of the spire properly. But in the end, I did manage to pull it off after multiple takes. The finishing touches for the video were done in post-production. I used the Apex Legends grappling sound, and I also had the CE walking slash landing sounds in as well. All the other audio was recorded from the footage itself, including the melee animation sounds and the environmental ambience. Overall, I am extremely happy with how this recreation ended up being, and the reaction from the comments has been amazing. And I also really appreciate you guys supporting my channel. It's been amazing to see how much I've grown since the end of summer. Once school ends, I hope to pick up my uploading schedule again, but it was fun doing something like this in the short time I have. If you want to see more game dev, Unity, and Halo content like this in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot to me, and I can't wait to show you what I have in store for the future.